Right, I suppose we'd better get on, hadn't we? Uh, last job is to make um, photo mats to go into our uh, folios. And if you watched my original overview of um, this folio, you will probably remember me saying that I had lost the will to live when it came to photo mats because there were so, so many. So I made quite a lot for the AB Studio one, but I didn't finish because there were so many. And I hardly made any at all for the Travelogue one um, because, well, I didn't. But that is really, really good news because it just shows you just how many photos you can put in these books. Hi, Michelle. Were you meant to have a swimming pool in your garage, Linda? Oh, mind a hot tub in the garden. No, a hot tub in the garden would be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah that'd be, yeah, that'd be nice. So, um, what I was going to do to, uh, to tonight is just talk to you about photo mats, and um, also I thought we could make a couple of the inserts that I made specially for this book. So, photo mats. Now, the joy of photo mats and using photo mats, <laughs> oh dear, Linda, is that. Um, we don't have to cover up our pretty papers with our photos. We can do, obviously, um, but we don't have to because we can put our photos on photo mats. And traditionally, I reckon we uh, would have photo mats that would fit six by four inch photos because that's standard size, certainly here in the UK. But then um, if you print them out at home or you're good with a, an app on your, your phone, you can print them out at half that size, which would be three by four, um, three by two, three by two. No, that's not three by two. No, because they're still it's still four inches down there. But you can still cut. You can still fit three, you can still fit four three by twos in, if that makes sense. Hi Lisa, hi Kerry. So just as an example, here is a photo mat and all I have done is I have taken a plain piece of my black card, um, you know, the same, the same black card that I've used throughout my book and on one side I have left space for a photo and in my books where I, hi Helen, um, where I, I use white card, that means that's where I would put a photograph. If I had a photograph to put in it, or if I'm giving it away, I would put a photo in. So like this photo mat, this is a typical thing that I would do for a six by four photo. So on one side, there's room for a photo. And on the other side, I've used one of the cutter parts. And then I've got space here for a um, three by four inch photo, which is half the size of the six by four. So I like to make them quite interesting. Now, this photo mat is a little bit different because I actually use one of the large cutter parts from the papers. Um, but um, that doesn't matter because, just for an example, I could take a square photo and I could blow it up to whatever size this is. I'm assuming it's six inches um, or crop down a, a bigger photo um, to fit that. So what I'm saying is that the photo mats can be dictated A, by the photos that you've got, but they can also be dictated by um, the interesting bits of your papers. So this one, this would be a traditional sort of seven by five, I'm guessing. So room for a photo on the back of that and then the, the, the papers on the front. So there's loads of space in these books for photo mats. So I would suggest that what you do is look at the off cuts that you've got left, see what fits, see what papers you've got left and just make them to fit. Because at the end of the day, you can crop your photographs. That's kind of the point. So here's one that I've made that's just long and thin because that just happened to be the off cut of paper that I got. Um, and, uh, you know, I can crop my photos to fit that. So there's loads of space in this album for you to put photos. You might have decided to put some on the front. You've got um, these uh, belly bands here where we can put photo mats. You can put photo mats here, um, you know, into the pot. Oh, just not with glass over again. Luckily, he hasn't got a drink in it this time. Just get rid of that. There's loads and loads of spaces where you can put your photo mats in this book. So what I wanted to do today was to talk to you as well about the photo mats that I've used on this page here. This is a quite specific. In this book, I just used some of the papers that I'd already got. 
um, so um, in the travelogue papers we've got these little um, postcards uh, but we've got a, a belly band here and you can just put an ordinary you know photo um, in there that's perfectly acceptable but one of the things I did just to add a bit of interest was I used some of the cutter parts that I've got and I made this fold over um, photo mat okay so that's what I've got in the travelogue folio the one in um, the AB studio folio is slightly different now once again you can see I've got all of my photo mats I've done some big ones here these are six by four photos that I've put onto a bigger piece I've used my odds and ends of papers just to add some interest to those um, and that's the same on on both sides so that will hold um, four six by four photos uh, so that's an example of something else that you can do um, that one again that's the same thing but without the space in between so what I'm saying basically is that you can make these to fit whatever you like here I like this one but this one actually is just a little booklet so I've just taken some of my base card uh, and I folded it in half now this isn't a six by four photo it was just what fitted but you could crop your photos down if you're actually putting photos straight into your book this was an example of what I said earlier about the, the really small photos that you can um, print out and use, Oops, um, which would be 3 by 2 Now I don't know what photo apps you actually like to use. Um, I use one called Pic Collage, which is a freebie that I got on my phone and it works really well for me. Uh, there's a whole load in there, so feel free to say um, in the comments what you found really useful if you print out your own photos at home. I have a selfie which I use quite a lot to print out photos it's not always the most cost-effective way of doing it but if I need a photo quickly it's just perfect and like I said I use this pick collage to make sure that my photos are the right size when I come to print them out now in this um, folio one of the things that I did was this little fold out um, photo mat here I actually put a little bit of a sort of a, a shaker pocket on the front and that's something that I want to make with you tonight and another thing that I did was instead of the postcard I made this little insert book here which you'll notice is very 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 like the original wallet Brad brag book that we made which I think was our first class ever in here um, it's slightly smaller I didn't put um, the waterfall of card uh, of, of papers in there and the reason that I didn't do that was because um, it made this pocket really really bulky so that's why I've just got one in there and that's something that I want to make with you tonight am I putting white card onto the black card yes but only because that's where I'm showing where my photos are going Michelle that's the only reason that I'm using the white card is that that would be where I would put a photograph it's just an example because um, when I'm making these books um, obviously there is always a finite amount of pattern paper that we've got um, so I don't want to use it all on on you know just sticking it onto to photo mats I like to have um, you know a way of just showing you uh, where you might want to put a photo uh, now obviously on the travelogue book where we've done the layouts um, I've used white card in there as well so you can see where I would have put the photos onto a scrapbook layout so I want to make these two with you tonight um, but I think as far as photo mats go there is no wrong or right way to do it so just for example here's another load of photo mats that I've made so these are once again these are going to fit the um, the three by two photos it's just a case of putting together what you've got um, and just making it all look very pretty but a photo mat is a good opportunity to use up all of the odds and ends of the papers that we have got left over so I'll just pop those back while we're here I'm going to do some shameless advertising because why not um, and I'm going to show you the um, stamp that I've had made um, with um, place photo here on it and I'm just going to show you how that works these are up in the website now oh there you go Sue it's here um hi Larissa oh good idea Sue yeah yeah free prints do do loads of great photos um there's one or two apps I think that you can you can do that with um definitely a good idea 
and also a lot of these um places like i mean i've used snap fishing in the past and that's always been a good place to leave photos so it almost like i've got a bit of a backup as well because they give you a certain amount of space to store your photos um and that can be that can be quite useful so if you are giving away your books, one of the things that I, I, I think, and I don't know what your experience is of this, but I'm talking about UK specifically, is that people don't always understand mini books. They don't understand. They're so used to seeing photo albums where you just open it up and, um, you know, it's just a page in a book. You know, you don't see usually all the little bits of interactivity that you get um in, in in a book that like the ones that we would make um and sometimes i think people will look at our books who don't understand them and uh not not be quite sure really what's going on so if you're going to gift one of your books um if i say for instance i was going to give this to you and you didn't make books you wouldn't have a flipping clue what to do with it hence place photo here stamp so here's my stamp um, it's got uh, CS on there and the reason that that's there is so that I know that that's the right way round for me to stamp okay well um, yeah they should be in in stock tomorrow Lisa and I'm waiting for delivery of some more as well because I'm just having some more made um, so I think they're really clever um, you know they've got they're in my corporate colours which is nice very glittery um, and uh, okay. they've got the um, the resin hand turned handles as well so just for an example um one thing i will say to, for you to bear in mind is that because these are completely handmade they're not super fancy stamps like you're gonna get when you're buying i don't know something like all and create or something like that um these are are handmade they're laser cut perfectly acceptable for what we're going to use them for but don't expect you know if you're if you're a stamper um you know who 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 loves stamping these aren't like your clear stamps they're a little bit different so if you're going to buy one of these i will enclose some information on the best way to prime them and the best way to use them because they are all slightly different so i'm just going to put some this if this all goes wrong i'm going to look like a right prat uh, but i'm just going to put some of my ink on there um, and I'm going to just place it in the middle of my um, my card here with the CS up so that I know that I'm stamping it the right way. And I'm just going to press that down. Take that away. And now I can see that if I give this to somebody, they're going to know exactly what that space is for. So that will be where you would put your photo. OK, um, so right. Without more ado, let's get on to the good stuff and make something. So I'm going to take you through both of these now. So I hope to have explained a little bit about photo mats and why I particularly like them, um, because uh, basically they don't they don't ruin um, all the pretty papers that we use. So if you want to grab, I'm going to grab some of my pattern paper, and this is the one that I've used. Uh, and I noticed that there's some nice bits here that I can fussy cut. So I'm going to take some of that out. I'm going to need uh, a bit of backing. So I want something quite plain. And I'm going to need some acetate, which is covered in cat hair. You don't have to have the cat hair on yours. It's not compulsory. It just seems to be in this house. Uh, and I'm going to just grab some black card. Now, I'm just going to grab... 12 by two, oh, that's an A3. God knows what that's doing in there. Uh, some some 12 by 12 because that just happens to be what I've got nearest to me. That looks really weird. I just stuck stuff in here earlier and I don't think that's the right card. No, it's not. You see, it's different. Right, okay. So let's start off by making the pretty card, the shaker pocket one. Okay. So these are specifically designed to fit into your 12 by 12 scrapbook folio on those belly bands that we've got. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to cut out a piece of your base card. Mine happens to be black. You might have done yours in white or whatever colour. Uh, and for example, this one is 11 inches by five and a half inches. I will be adding these into the final tutorial in due course. So don't worry too much about sizes. So let's cut 11 inches by five and a half inches and you're going to need at least two of these by the way but i'm just going to make one for the moment so five and a half inches by 11 inches okay oh 
knocking everything over. And I'm just going to grab my scoreboard. And I'm going to score on the 11 and a half inch side. 11 inch side at five and a half inches, Mark. Is yes. that halfway? Yes. Few at five and a half inches. Okay. Simple as that. I, Sally, know we'll let you off, lovely. Okay. So you're just going to fold that in half. And that is base, that's the base of our photo mat. But on the front here, we want to do a little bit of a shaker pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, this bit here, into a frame. And I'm just going to double check what size I cut it. I think it was, yeah, three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mat. Not I've wrecked this bit that I'm working on now, so I don't know why I'm bothering with a mat, really. And I'm going to measure, I'm going to open it out and I'm going to measure a frame all the way around here at three quarters of an inch. Now I can draw it with a pencil, um, in which case I would do it on this side, um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just measure it and make some little marks with my knife. So I'm going to make a mark there at three quarters of an inch so I can see where I need to cut a mark there. Mark there and a mark there. I turn that round now and just make sure that those two marks are lined up. I know that that three quarters of an inch mark there and there, that's where I need to cut my line. And the same on the other side. So if I line those up, three quarters of an inch there and there. Cut that. And now I can cut those out. And of course, if you've done it cleverly, this bit that you've cut out of that frame, can now be another photo mat. Why not? Waste not, want not. That's the nice thing about photo mats, I think. Okay, so what you've got here now is you've got your photo mat with a frame cut out of it. Now, what we want to do is attach our acetate onto here. So um, I'm just gonna grab some double-sided tape. Now, the best tape to use to attach double-sided, to attach acetate is um, the, uh, the red tape, but I discovered this not very long ago, which worked to treat. So um, I'm gonna use this, this polyester, um, very, very, very sticky tape. And I'm just going to stick that around the edge. On the inside of my photo mat, by the way. Like that. Okay. I'm just going to use my bone folder just to make sure that I've got that stuck down really really well okay so what I need to do now is cut out my acetate I should have done this a bit earlier but you know I've lost it already it's clear right I've lost the cat hairs and I'm just going to cut that at um, 
five and three eighths of an inch square I reckon should do it so just under five and a half so five and three quarters of an inch five and three Eight. eighths of an inch it's too hot right that fits on there all right so let's take off that Stuff, which as Gwen noticed and I hadn't isn't static how easy is that and I'm just going to attach my acetate like that I'm just going to make sure that that's stuck down really well okay Right, so I've got my acetate cover here, plus cat hair. Now, what I need to do is cut a backing piece for this. Now, if you're using double-sided paper, this is where this works. I stupidly, I'm not using double-sided paper, which isn't the smartest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to bear that in mind. So I'm going to take this because I want to use this for my backing paper. And I'm going to cut this as well at five and three eighths of an inch square. And I'm going to cut two because I stupidly haven't got double sided paper. But if you've got double sided paper, you are quids in. Okay. Super. And that will fit on there eventually and be the backing for our little shaker pocket there but we need something to go in the shaker pocket so take a look at the papers that you've got and we're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting so I can see I've got some flowers here that are kind of pretty get my fussy cutting scissors and I'm just going to quickly cut those out I mean you can add anything you like in here I'm using bits of pattern paper from you know the papers that I've got because when I come to finish off my folio I'm going to be cutting loads of these out and adding them as accents all the way through my book so it'll be nice to add these into this particular photo mat I think add that in I've got this brown pink one and because I don't like just two of anything I'd rather have three I'm going to cut one of these little tiny ones out too. Now this isn't going to be a shaker shaker pocket because it's going to be quite tight in that um, it's not going to be 3D so there's not going to be room to shake shake stuff. It's more about looking pretty if that makes sense. They will move a bit but don't expect this to be a brilliant shaker pocket like we had on the front of the Bloom Street book or whatever oh by the way right tomorrow night if you're coming into the crafting together with all brands group with me um i know that um they prefer if it's a surprise what we're going to make which obviously if we're making a big book that's not possible and um, there is a big book coming it's going to be 10 inches square that's all i can tell you at the moment and um, but in the meantime we're going to be doing just some little books and i will tell you that tomorrow night when i say we're going to make a little book i mean super tiny we're going to make these cutest tiniest little books ever so um i'll put a list up of things that you might need but basically it's scraps it's odds and ends bits of chipboard bits of pattern paper it's just tiny tiny bits and using up stuff it's just for fun they can't we can't really use them for much just just fun stuff so i've got some um sequins because I love them and I have thousands of the damn things darn things sorry never said that out loud uh, that I'm just going to put on there 
and then I've got some of these do you remember these these candy things that I can't we had a few years ago they were all the rage I'm just going to put a few of those knocking about make sure they're facing the right way and now I'm just going to put some more of my super sticky tape around yeah oh cat no storm oh man no I don't know if you know, but I have what my dad refers to as a proper job, uh, as well as doing this. And uh, I had a very important work Skype meeting this morning, and I'm sitting there trying to be all professional and stuff, and Storm just jumps and runs right across my keyboard and my laptop. I mean, for goodness sake. And then they were all like, oh, look at the cat she's so cute and I'm like no she's not she's a pain in the butt aren't you darling yeah my pain in the butt though right so take that double-sided tape off and now lay down your backing paper remember that the way that you're laying it down is what's going to be seen through so just just bear that in mind when you're laying it down okay and make sure that you've got a good a good adhesion there so when i close that up now oh look, i've got a little bit of a shaker pocket okay it's not the best one in the world because like i said there isn't a lot of room for shaking uh, but there is there is one there nonetheless so there we go right that's not enough though i need to make a frame to cover that so what i'm going to do is i've got this piece here that i know fits on there uh, because I cut it down the right size and I am now going to cut a frame out of it so this is already cut at five and three eighths of an inch so that when I put it on my uh, pocket here I've already got my little black outside bit now as you know this space here is three quarters of an inch so if I then measure three quarters of an inch in from here to do my frame that means that there's going to be a slight overlap over that black edge there because I personally I don't want it to be seen so if I cut my frame now at three quarters of an inch where's my ruler are you sitting on it storm yes you are thank you no give mine um so I'm going to cut that now at three quarters of an inch making myself a mark so I can see where I need to be cutting yeah let's try and work in where three quarters of an inch from the bottom is No, I'm concentrating I've got my tongue out okay let's just cut that and waste not want not of course that bit that we cut out of here earlier look at that that fits on there so result I've got another photo mat so now that will just fit on there perfectly just to give me a frame so I did have earlier 
I'm just going to ink the edge. Now, I haven't made these in the travelogue book, but if you did have the travelogue kit, I have actually put you some sequins and acetate in, so if you want to make these, you absolutely can. Didn't want to leave you out. Okay. So, now, oh God, cat's on the move again. What are you doing? Oh, okay. Let's put a little bit of glue around the edge there. Make yourself comfortable, Storm, why don't you? And I'm just going to add that frame onto there, like that. It's a bit boring. So what I'm going to do now, excuse me, Storm, thank you, dear, is um, if I just cut out... Some more of these flowers I can just layer them up in the corner and make it look all pretty Now the AB Studio papers actually come with some um, some words and phrases uh, on them, which is nice to use. Or the Tim Holtz phrases are always good to add a bit of interest. You can always use the ones that we made in the group. They're knocking about somewhere. Those words that we put together, the words and phrases, put those onto there because it always adds some interest. Right, and I need some sort of greenery, I think. Right, I'm not going to be too careful the way I cut this out. Otherwise we'll be here all night. I just want to give you a, a taste of the sorts of things that you can you can do. Okay, so just for an example, let's pop. flower Let's add that in there mm. right that's just really quick just so you get an idea so my folio which I still haven't finished because I got sidetracked as always obviously want to map that bit and that bit sorry storm but you're in the way and then that will just slip onto that there and that will give us that insert okay it just gives you an idea I'll need to do quite a lot more work to that but it'll it'll give you a simple idea of what you can do so that's one of the inserts now the other one 
is basically just the wallet brag book oh god storm sat on it isn't she <sighs> could you move where is it oh god right there's that one we've done that one oh storm can you move no i mean move move thank you dear here we go it's all right you can come back um this one so what well, this is dead easy oh, oh. what is she doing right now we're going to cut a piece of card black card because that's the color that i've used on my base i'm going to cut it at six and a quarter inches by ten and a half inches so we'll do that now while i'm thinking about it can i help thank you so six and a quarter inches by did i say ten and a half by ten and a half inches but i'm also going to need to cut this photo mat here which i would hazard a guess is Uh, six and one eighth of an inch by four and five eighths of an inch. I don't know why I make things stupid sizes. What did I say? Six and an eighth, four and five eighths. Six and an eighth. Four and five eighths. <laughs> And four and five eighths. The reason that they're that odd size is because that means that you can put a six by four photo on there without having to cut it down. That's why it's got an extra eighth of an inch because it gives you that border around the outside. So grab your uh, thingy, this thing, scoreboard, and score on the four and five eighths of an inch side, just a half an inch. Okay. Oh no, hang on, we need to score this as well. So we're going to score on the uh, ten and a half inch side at two inches and at six and a half inches. So two inches and six and a half inches. Okay. Then we're just going to fold that up like that and that one down like that just to make a little sort of gatefoldy type. Wallet. Burnish it well. Okay, so it's going to open up like that. And then we've got our photo mat. Fold on the flap there. Burnish that down. We're going to pop some glue on the bottom of that flap. And we are going to glue this underneath this short of the two inch flap here, nearly, nearly, nearly up to where the score line is, but not touching it. And we're going to centre it left to right. You'll have hardly any gap at all. And just stick that down there. So we have that for our photo mats. But obviously you can put photos here, here, here. There's space on all of these for photo mats. Okay. And that is just simply how we make that. If you want to go back and have a look at the Wallet Brag book, you'll find this little book, but with more photo, um, it's more of a waterfall, um, which makes a great little insert, but just bear in mind about how thick it's going to be, because that can kind of um, change the way your, your book looks when you're stuffing things into small places. So 
there we go that's all I wanted to show you tonight so I know we haven't really been doing very much for very long but I just wanted to give you some ideas for some little photo mats and ways that you can um, incorporate them into your projects whatever they may be so um, do we have any questions or are you all happily beavering away working apart from Storm who's gone to sleep on, on my <sighs> on my double sided tape which means it's all going to be furry the scores on this one on the large piece which was six and a quarter by ten and a half I want you to score on the ten and a half inch side Helen at two inches and at six and a half inches and then on the actual photo mat which was six and an eighth by four and five eighths I want you to score on the four and five eighths side at half an inch so that what you've got then is this flap which is perfect to put a six by four photo on but it gives you that little bit of outline how do I attach the charms good question uh, the charms on this book we've attached just on a binder clip just to the outside you should have had them um, binder clips in with your in with your kits so literally we've got a binder clip here I did show I don't know for those of you who don't know the binder clips actually come apart I don't know if you know that they do they come apart so that you can easily just slip your charm on slip that back in there then attach it wherever you want it to go you could attach it on the front of your book just there I'm going to put mine on the spine wrap that down and there's my charm Mel will tell me off now because it's not the right way around okay so it really is that simple it's just a, an ordinary little binder clip um, and I've just attached it wherever I wanted it to go but it'll it'll fit on the outside here just as well as it will on the spine wherever you want it to go okay any other questions what's for tea yeah well I don't know we did decide I've forgotten already so that is the completion of the 12 by 12 scrapbook folio we are going to start the Alice book on Wednesday the 1st of July which means that those of you who haven't had your kits they'll be out by Friday for those that are still waiting um, and I'm pretty certain that the reserve list is all going to get one as well but I'll know for sure on Friday morning um, and uh, up until then I thought we could still do stuff on a Wednesday evening if you want to um, so I'll think of some little classes that we can do together um, just to just to keep keep me company really on a Wednesday evening and stop me shouting at the cats so I can't wait to see these all finished pop them in the group thank you for joining me over the last five weeks and onwards and upwards and I will see you perhaps tomorrow in crafting together um, otherwise I'll see you back here next Wednesday all right thanks a lot guys you take care of yourselves bye, bye.